Shooting travel videos has become an extremely popular way to capture and share the experience of a trip or vacation, but it can be extremely overwhelming to shoot and underwhelming if it doesn't turn out right. In this video, I'm gonna tell you some ways that you can make better travel videos, and just for fun, we're gonna pretend like we're traveling and go for a hike while we do it. The first tip that I have for you is to think about what type of travel video you want to make. Most likely when you saw the title of this or when you heard me say travel video at the start of this, you had something in mind. But there are a lot of different types of travel videos out there that you could make. So are you hoping to make an epic Sam Colder style with all the crazy transitions and FPV droning? Or do you wanna make more of a fun vloggy style video where you're kind of the star and it's showing your trip? Or maybe you're the type to do the thoughtful, inspirational voiceover. Whatever it happens to be, make sure you think about the style of video that you want to make and the tone that you want to set for the video. Something I would suggest is even picking some of the music ahead of time so that you get an idea of where this video might go. You could even try and storyboard some of it. Always be mentally ready to change if you have to because a lot can happen while you're traveling, but the more that you can plan out ahead of time, the better. The next tip is to talk to the people that you're going on the trip with. If you're anything like me, you're probably not going on this trip just to make a travel video. If you are, that's great, but I think most people, when they go on trips like this, it's like their vacation, they might be going with a significant other, or maybe with friends, and one of the most important things that you can do is talk to the people that you're traveling with about the filming that you're gonna be doing on the trip. The last thing you wanna do is be a bummer on the trip because you're constantly holding everybody up and no one was expecting it. So the number one thing that you can do is just explain to them the filming that you're gonna be doing while you're on the trip. This has saved me a number of times when I remember to do it and it's bit me so hard when I forget. If they understand the intention behind all of the shooting that you're doing and they know ahead of time that it's gonna take maybe a little bit more time to get the shot that you need and that kind of thing, they're gonna be so much more understanding when it happens in the moment. But you also wanna make sure that you get a vibe about how they feel about it ahead of time and make compromises if necessary. Okay, so we know what type of video we wanna make. We've talked to the people that we're traveling with. Now it's super important that you know your gear. There's a ton of really great gear out there that's built just for traveling, but in the end, you have what you have, so it's super important that you know your gear inside and out. In my mind, there are two main reasons why you wanna make sure you know your gear. First of all, you don't wanna miss a shot because you're so busy trying to figure out your own gear. And second of all, you don't wanna miss your entire trip because you're trying to figure out your gear because you don't wanna miss the shot. Now, one other thing in regards to gear that's super important is making sure that it's prepped ahead of time. And what I mean by that is spend the night before or maybe even the morning of making sure you've got charged batteries, making sure you've got the settings that you think you'll need. If you've got memory locations on your camera, make sure to use those. Anything that you can do to make it quicker when you're out in the field getting these shots is gonna be helpful. Now, I'm not gonna talk a whole bunch about specific gear in this video because I feel like that could be its own thing, but I do wanna talk about one piece of gear that's been super helpful in my recent travels and also happens to be the sponsor of this video and that is the Polar Pro Traverse. The Traverse is part of Polar Pro's brand new quick draw line and it makes carrying your camera so much easier hands-free. Let me give you a quick rundown on how it works. First of all, you attach this Polar Pro Arca Swiss compatible plate to the bottom of your camera. Then you can attach the Traverse itself to your backpack strap and just make sure you tighten it down really good with these screws. Before you put your camera on, you wanna make sure that the red is showing saying that it's not locked. All you're gonna do after that is clip one side in and click down on the other side. And I highly recommend locking it if you don't need it right away. When you're ready to get your camera off, all you do is slide into the unlock position and then twist until it snaps out of the clip. So again, that's one side clipped in, click it down and then lock it and then unlock it and twist to get it off. 
Not only is it super handy, but it's also ridiculously satisfying. Huge thank you to Polar Pro for sponsoring this video. Let's get back on the road. Here's a little bonus tip. If you're ever traveling up to my neck of the woods, make sure to bring bug spray. Stupid bugs. The next tip is a bit of a tricky one. It's to shoot the right amount. Now, the reason that I say it's tricky is because it takes some time to learn what the right amount is. And the reason that I say the right amount and not like shoot lots or don't shoot too much is because there's a very fine line there. Personally, I like to err on the side of getting too much. I'd rather have too much footage than be missing footage that I need to finish what I want to do. That being said, if you shoot absolutely everything, when you get home, you're gonna have a ton of footage to go through and it's going to be a giant pain in your butt. The other thing is, if this is your vacation, you want to make sure that you're actually enjoying it and not sitting there staring at your camera the entire time. So a little exercise that you can do is when you're trying to decide whether something is worth getting or not, make sure you just think to yourself, is this a great shot? Is this moving forward my story? Does this serve a purpose? If you answer yes to one, two, or three of those questions, then fantastic. I think you should probably get that shot. But if you say no to any of them, then you might want to second guess whether it's worth it to get. Or is it just going to be something that ends up on a hard drive and never gets used anyway? In times where things are moving quickly and you might not have time to think about those kinds of things, I do err on the side of getting too much. But I think that's something that comes with a lot of practice and time to know quickly whether that shot is going to be worth it or not. And remember, if there's something that you miss, something exciting that happened, that's okay. You're the only one who knows. Nobody else knows that anything is missing. They assume that everything that's in your video is everything that happened. The next tip is probably the one that I struggle with the most out of all of them, and that is making sure that you're getting good coverage. What I mean by that is getting a good variety of shots, making sure that you're getting wide shots, you're getting medium shots, you're getting tight shots, the details, making sure that you're getting setups of the area that you're going to be in. All of these things can be really important to making sure that you're telling a good story, which in the end is pretty much the goal no matter what type of video you chose to make. Be specific about your slow motion. Don't just shoot everything in slow motion. It gets tired after a while. You want to get shots of people. People are interesting to us. And most importantly, if you're going to be the star of your own show, get shots of yourself. This is where talking to your travel partners can be handy because they might be able to actually help you get those shots. If not, bring a tripod. And if you are going to ask your friends or your significant other to try and help you get shots, make sure they know that ahead of time. Make sure you ask them don't just spring it on them last minute. And a quick little pro tip, something that I learned a little while ago, is that you can do your talking parts afterwards, after whatever you just did rather than before, because if you do them before, you might not be able to get into detail about what you're about to do. You might not know exactly what you're about to do. My final and possibly most important tip that I'm going to give you today might sound a bit like a cheesy one, but it's to have fun. I know, I know, I know how it sounds. Hear me out for a second though. First and foremost, like I said before, most of us aren't paid to make these travel films. You're probably on holiday and it is not worth ruining your holiday to make a travel film. Second of all, if there's no fun happening, what are you capturing? Leaves? Mountains? Okay, that's cool, but things happening and fun happening is going to be way more exciting in your film. And if you are a professional who's being paid to go do these things, 
You probably knew all this stuff already. Maybe it was a nice reminder, but chances are you probably knew this stuff. But anyway, those are my tips for today. I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you have anything else to add, any great tips for beginners who are trying to make travel films, make sure to leave a comment down below. And on your way down there, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Polar Pro for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time.